Hi, hi. Welcome to the Human Design for Marketing podcast. I'm your host, Yvette Mayer, and this show is for you if you're done with cookie cutter marketing and ready to build your personal brand in alignment with who you really are. Let's dive in. Hello, and welcome back to the Human Design for Marketing podcast. I'm coming in today with something of a different topic. In our last couple of episodes, we've focused on different aspects within your chart and how you can go looking for absolutely magical insight in your gates uh, and other areas of your chart as well. This week, I am going in an entirely different direction and this is going to be something of a personal share but with, I think, a lot of value for you as well as it pertains to how you run your business, how you think about things like your life force energy and what your version of success is all about. So just to kick us off, I have just been on a retreat, a business retreat over the weekend and I went away Uh, really looking for some activation into what is my next level of growth. If you've been around here a while, you will know that around 14, 15 months ago, I began focusing on human design and marketing. Before that, I was what I called the lit up and liberated entrepreneur. And my business was built, was pretty much built around helping you scale your impact and have more freedom. And this really drives me, this feeling of wanting to be lit up and to feel liberated. It's who I am. It came through before I found human design when I was still in corporate. And at the time, I was feeling very drained by the work I was doing. And I was also feeling trapped, like really stuck by the lifestyle and the the level of abundance that I'd created. And so I had this desire to create a life for myself where I would feel entirely lit up and liberated. And if you go back to the beginning of the podcast, that is very much what I talk about. And then over time, I found that I was so much more drawn into my spirituality. And as I navigated my own business, I started to lean more and more into human design and discovered that when I was in alignment with my design, that my marketing was far more powerful. And once I started experimenting with this, I had to share it. I'm a line five after all. I cannot wait to share what I discover. And I set off in building this new body of work. And it has been the most epic experience of my business so far. What I've created is something of a legacy that I'm incredibly proud of. And in this space, I feel that I have developed my own voice more than ever before and built a lot of IP, which is exciting and it's been awesome. Now, last year, I really had the intention that I would take it, I wouldn't say slowly, but I would be very focused on building strong foundations. And what that looked like for me was, here I go again with my design, but I'm a line one. So I had to be confident in my depth of knowledge and stand fully in my power in how I spoke about this. So that required me to go deeper and deeper into the well of human design and unlocking more and more wisdom. And so in a way, I decided that it was less about building income, uh, and more about building my profile. And so my entire strategy for last year was all on becoming synonymous with human design and marketing, uh, helping as many women as I possibly could discover how to do their marketing in alignment with their design and start to enjoy it more and create that business on their own terms. And as the year unfolded, things began to grow, which was very exciting because it wasn't actually where I was putting my attention on grow, 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 grow. Yes, I was launching and when with launching comes a desire for more. That's true. However, I was very uh, 
I, I would say regulated around my uh, my stage of growth, actually. And then at the end of the year, I introduced the YouTube channel. And what ended up happening is, by the way, I love the YouTube channel and it's not going anywhere, but adding in the YouTube channel on top of all the other things that I was doing created a lot more time pressure. And so over the last four or five months since the YouTube channel launched, I began overworking. Now, I wasn't it wasn't that I wasn't conscious because I kept saying to myself, uh, it's like short-term pain for long-term gain. It's okay. We have to do hard things sometimes. We have to persevere when things feel hard. And so over the last five months, there's been a lot of working beyond my happy place. Like, I'm going to be honest. It's been more weekend working, late night working, and I, I lost my way a bit around this and I found myself starting to feel like way more driven by having enough money in the bank to do all of the things that I wanted to do in the business, to have the team in place to support me, which is obviously critical, but also, you know, to keep doing more and more and more and more. And with that, that puts pressure back on me around, well, I have to attract more uh, humans in. I have to convert more. There needs to be more clients, more money, more, more, more. And this really had, had um, I realised over the weekend that this had thrown my nervous system out of alignment. Now, I did not go away on a retreat thinking I would decide to work less. But actually, that is what happened. Because what I came to appreciate is that, and I'm I'm sharing this with you because I want you to have this land for you as well, it's really easy to get addicted to work. And especially if you're a generator or a manifesting generator, we love working. There is nothing better for us than that feeling of satisfaction that we get through our work. And that can be addictive. And that is why burnout is something that happens to generators uh, and all types. I'm not saying it doesn't happen to all types. You, you all have a finite amount of life force. And so I started really thinking about life force as a concept. You know, what I teach with Human Design for Marketing is really about optimising your life force, your natural energetic, energetic, your natural energetic blueprint to have more ease and more effectiveness. And yet I had started to deplete my life force. So let's talk about life force. It's your energy, right? So this is your human design energetic blueprint. And we are all, uh, let's say we're born with different ways of our energy working. And depending on what type you are and which centers you have defined, you're going to have a very different life force experience. So somebody that is a reflector, for instance, their life force is really inconsistent. It's more a matter of their environment and being really attuned to their environment, how much life force they have. Somebody that is a projector with very little definition has to be very conscious of how they work smarter and not harder to maximize their potency based on their life force. Uh, a manifester, a manifester has urges and waves generally of big energy, but then they're very much uh, in alignment by having the right people around them to make things happen so they can surge and then take time out. And then when we get to the generator and the manifesting generator, yes, we have the most uh, life force energy because we have our sacral defined, but it still runs out. And I think we can, you know, we can run into issues no matter what type we are. We can run into issues when we're not valuing our life force. So this is what's happened over the far last few days for me. It began with this retreat when I was asked what my big vision was. Uh, 
And what dropped in for me in that moment was, I don't know, <laughs> followed by, I think I want to work less, which surprised me. It wasn't something that I'd been thinking about. And I was almost embarrassed to share this. I was amongst all these highly ambitious and driven and let's go, let's get ahead, let's make more money, let's do all the things, women are awesome, and I love that energy. So it was surprising for me that that is what came out of my mouth. And as the weekend went on, my resistance to this idea, because I had resistance, got lower and lower and lower. So by the end of the weekend, I was clear that I am not in a sprint that yes, year one was about foundations in my business. Year two is about alignment. It's not about scale. And I think that I got, uh, I kind of, I got off track by going, I've set the foundation. Now it's time to scale. Now I am resetting my energy to say this year is not about scaling, although it may happen anyway. It is more about alignment and valuing my life force. So that came out of the retreat and that was already like, wow, that wasn't what I was expected, expecting, but that's, a, that's pretty amazing. And then on Monday, I was still um, up north and I went to hang out with one of my very closest friends in the whole world. Uh, I worked with her for many, many years, both in Sydney and in New York. So we're both from a marketing and advertising background. Uh, she she lives up north and she's recently gone through a huge health crisis. I won't go into that more than to say that I know this health crisis. I've been there um, and going to see her and going to see her from a place of more clarity around the importance of my life force and actually my health and well-being was so perfectly timed because she loves me, she adores me, and even um, without my retreat experience, I think we would have had this conversation, which was, <clears throat> sorry, her saying to me, why are you so driven? Why do you work so hard? You're obsessed with your business. And, you know, my response to that was, well, I don't have children. I actually love working. And after what felt like a really soul-destroying soul career in marketing and growing big business that I wasn't aligned with, doing this work, it fills my soul. Like I want to be known for something. I want a legacy. I want to be a role model. All of those things really drive me. And she said, why? And I, and, and she kept pressing me on this and I'm like, because that's what I want. And she's like, yeah, but I know you and I know the more joyful, playful, adventurous you and this doesn't feel like you're allowing that side to come through right now. And I'm like, fair point. She also said something um, that, you know, that just had me pause, which was all the things you want you already are and you don't see how much you've already done those things. Like in your career, it doesn't matter who you were working for, the people that were your peers who were in your energy and who that were your clients or they reported into you, they already have this experience of you. They already feel like you made their life better, that you have had this positive impact. And I'm like, whoo, okay. Um, and so, you know, this conversation just, it was just so nurturing and, you know, it's not all like I need to take this on. This is her opinion and she's at a place of having gone through a lot of treatment and I know that place. Like I have been there. I have had breast cancer. I've been through treatment for breast cancer. I've been at the end of that. You're completely depleted. You've also re reset what's important to you massively. Uh, you realise that what's important is your health, your family, your relationships, that work isn't all that important. Uh, this is what comes through after major illness. So I know where she's coming from. 
and I know I've been there. It doesn't mean that I'm going to spend all of my life there, but I think that I have lost some of that in the process. So that was the next thing that kind of happened that just reinforced, wow, I I am actually feeling a deep shift internally right now. Like I, I started to see that I've become a victim of my own work ethic and, and none of this is because of anyone in my life. This is all coming from me, right? Um, and even though everything that I've done, there's been so much joy and goodness in, and I don't think that I would be where I am without that, it's just so, it's feeling so good to have had this drop in. And then on my way back, I spoke to uh, a healer that I work with uh, and you know, we kind of started working together with me in this like masculine, do all the things. I want to be well known. I want to be regarded on a global stage level, like all of that. That was like, "Ah, that's how I showed up. And we finished our work together because it was our last session with me saying, "Uh, okay, I don't like, I feel like I've had this ginormous shift And I I still um, feel very much that that's all true for me, but what I now appreciate is that it's true for me and I get to have all of that in a way that is better for me, my health, my relationships, uh, my joy, and actually get back to building my business in a way that feels lit up and liberated as well as doing all of that. And this came through for me, and this is the main thing I wanted to say to you. Uh, And she was like, yes, this is everything for you because you work with energy, you work with frequency. So what I came to at the bottom of the bottom of all of this was, and I'm going to invite you to do this as well, what if we valued our energy, our life force, as much as we value money? What if every time a situation, a person, a direction that wasn't good for your energetic um, resources, is that the right way of saying this? Yeah, if it wasn't the right move for you and your energetic resources, what if we felt as poor or as fearful around leaking energy as we do about leaking money. We don't, right? We like are so loose with our energy. This can show up in boundaries. It can show up in overworking. It can show up in people pleasing. This this like leaking of our energy. Whereas we freak out if we leak money or if we spend more than we earn, like, and if we feel so unsafe, but it's just money. It's also just energy. So actually, what if we started to value our life force energy as the most precious resource? It is our most precious resource. We only have one life. We only have a finite amount of time here. And our energy is everything. When our energy goes, we go. Money comes and goes. But our unique life force, we only have one of them. And what I have made a commitment to myself to do is to start actually valuing my life force more than money, questioning my choices. And yes, this looks a lot like aligning into my human design. It looks like trusting my authority. It looks like asking myself, does this feel lit up for me? It looks like being more self-assured in what is right for me and true for me and not leaking energy. Now, how does this play into human design for marketing? Massively, because we are in this environment where we're kind of bombarded by algorithms and hooks and, you know, all the things that are important, but it, takes us out of our life force and into this hustle energy instead of actually coming back to doing our marketing in a way that is right for our life force. And that could mean being slightly less present. It might mean that for me. I 
I'm not going to promise you that, but it might lead to me doing slightly less marketing actually to free myself up to do more things that are joyful and give me energy. Uh, so I hope this has been really helpful for you. I know it's a quite a different episode, but we've had some deep learning into the practical of late and I wanted to share more in the energetics today and really ground it into my real life experience. Let me know how you've enjoyed this one. Pop into my Instagram DM anytime. And by the way, I've had a couple of incredibly beautiful reviews of late. So next week I'm going to, oh, next time I'm here, every couple of weeks seems to be more the case, I'm going to read out uh, two reviews that, and, and maybe more if, if I get more this week that are just, you know, giving me so much joy and making me want to actually show up here on the podcast more than ever. It lights me up. Have a beautiful one, my friend. Bye for now. There are heaps more resources in the show notes. I can't wait to be back in your ears again soon. Bye for now.